my mom's going to teach you how to budget. So I know that's going to be a lot of talking, but promise you might want to listen to all the things that she says. So if you want to learn how to budget, stay tuned. <laughs> For today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how we budget. Um, if you're new to this channel, at the end of every video, I like to give you guys three different options to choose from as far as what I'm going to film next. Um, so last week's video, I gave you guys three different topic choices. And out of the three choices that I gave you guys, you guys chose this one on how we budget, which I'm excited to go ahead and film for you guys because I feel like depending on where you're at in your life, you can either gain a little or a lot from this video. Um, so I'm excited to share it. Budgeting is something that Will and I learned when I was about 19 or 20. Um, at the time we were living with his dad and um, we had the master bedroom. It was really awesome. Like he always was like, no, like you guys take the master bedroom. It was something that's not like your normal family would do. Um, it was pretty cool because he was like a single guy. And um, anyway, so that was the situation. And um, he was in the process of moving to the next house and he said, okay, you guys, you know, you guys are old enough now to pay bills. You know what I mean? Of course. We were just kind of milking it in a way. Um, but anyway, so we said, you know, I'm gonna charge you X amount for rent and you guys have to pay um, half of all the utilities. So there's three of us, so we all had to split it in three different ways, you know? So um, Will and I were just kind of like, okay. And it was never, we had jobs. It was never like, oh my God, how are we gonna pay? It was like, okay, how are we gonna get on a routine of um, budgeting our money and you know, when to take it out of our bank, when to transfer money into his account, stuff like that, right? Um, so the end result was me learning this way. So I've been doing it this way for so long, so I never really realized that a lot of people might struggle um, with the whole budgeting thing. Um, or if you don't struggle and you're just in a point in your life where you feel like you could budget better, um, I'm gonna give you guys some options as to what I do. So this is something that helps a lot. So I made this cute little cover just to kind of make it fun. It says monthly finance tracker, the rad fan bills, and then it says like personal information, Viva Las Vegas. Kind of simple, but I wanted to make it fun. Um, whenever you open up my binder over here, I have like stamps because I'm always needing stamps, um, extra envelopes, um, stickers to go ahead and send out packages. I have kind of like a random file that just kind of has like a bunch of random things in it. But moving along to the main part of this binder, um, I bought this little pencil pouch at Justice. I thought it was so cute because normal pouches are a little bit wider. So it would cover up, you know, majority of the paper that's behind it. So I thought it was cool that it was like kind of cut in half. I love the idea of having a pencil pouch in your binder because if you needed a pen, obviously, or a pencil or a marker, or if you need another paper clip, it's something that you don't have to continuously get up and go grab. So behind my pencil pouch, this is where I pay my bills. This is where I sit here and I open up my laptop hop online and then I go ahead and go from start to finish. So I start from the top, which is my Southwest gas bill. And then I go all the way down and I make sure I write it down. I write down the date, I write down the amount, and then I go ahead and check off if, it, if I paid it. Because if I don't check it off, there have been times where um, I'm like, I don't know if I paid it or not. So that check mark reassures me that I did pay it. To the left of all of my bills, I made like this whole little area that has all of my usernames, my passwords, our social security numbers, um, Will's work information to log on to his work website, um, our Chase routing and account number. I chose to do them kind of envelope style so that you know nobody actually can see them unless I needed them because there have been times where you know, I'm sitting next to somebody and you know, maybe I don't want them obviously to see my social security number or my bank routing information. Um, so I thought it was really cool that I made like these little pockets to have those in there. Um, I have personally have gone through an issue of forgetting my passwords because sometimes they want, you know, a capital letter or they want a number or now they want, you know, a question mark or an exclamation point. So, you know, I was forgetting the passwords all the time and changing them. So this was something huge for me that I did when I sat down. I was like, I'm going to write everything down and I'm going to put it in a little envelope pocket form so that if I ever were to run into this issue again, 
it's right there. And that has helped me a lot because whenever I do go to start paying my bills, I just take that little slip out and I see the company and the username and the password and I just go down the line of paying all my bills off and it makes it so much more easier to log in and whatnot. Also sat down one day and I averaged out our monthly utility bills in the summer and the winter as far as how expensive our bills are in the summer and how expensive our bills are in the winter, which obviously in the summer they're a lot higher, but I was curious to know like how much higher are they in the summer versus the winter and um, I made a graph and everything and obviously with technology, um, I was able to make that just off of my Mac computer. They have an option on there to make graphs. Um, you can make a circle graph or you can make you know, the line graphs. Um, I chose the circle one and I just, it kind of brings it more to your attention or to the person that you're trying to explain your bills to a lot easier. It makes it easier when it's just right there and it has the graph and it shows like how much more you're paying a month. Um, and ours is significantly high. It's um, about a couple hundred dollars more in the summer. So over here I have all of our monthly house expenses. So this is just all of our utilities along with our HOA at the bottom. I did make another slip on the left hand side that has everything else. So all those little in between things. So I have groceries, our car insurance, our home insurance, uh, Will's car payment, our phone bill, our bug guy every time I go to Sally Beauty. The very, very, very first thing that I think is the most important thing, um, you know, as far as where to start is to go ahead and pick out a date that works for, you know, either your roommate or your spouse or yourself. Let's say you're just by yourself and you're like, I want to get out of my parents' house or I want to jump from this roommate to try to be on my own or whatever your situation is. I think the first thing is to pick a day where you have nothing going on and kind of figure out, okay, let's lay everything out on the table and figure out how we can save more and how we can budget better. Um, so by doing that, I know for me, um, Will and I, every six months, we sit down like, hey, we're kind of falling off track here. We've been going to in and out you know, one too many times a week. Um, you know, our car washes, we've been getting them done like every other week rather than every other other week. You know what I mean? You fall into like a comfort zone of like a wave where you kind of fall off track. You know, it's just normal, I feel like. Um, for us, I know that going through our bills every six months kind of keeps us on track um, without falling off too far. Uh, Will and I definitely fell into that, I want to say like two years ago, we were like, oh my gosh, we are spending like a thousand dollars on groceries a month and it was because we were going to Walmart and we would see these extra things, whether it be toys or things for the house or whatever. So like just those bills add up because we were going so often uh, monthly. So, um, you know, I had to start budgeting that out. Like, okay, what can we do better? Now this is a perfect example of how I was able to drop that grocery bill to a much lower number. Um, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but a lot of stores now do the online pickup. Um, they make it super easy and convenient. Um, anybody could, you know, just download the app and place an order. I love it because I'm able to go ahead and just lay in bed and Will and I go ahead and go down our list of what we need and we just do all of our shopping right there from our bed and then we go and pick it up. But it does really help, especially if you have kids because you know the struggle of bringing your kids into a grocery store, what it's like to get them to kind of stay in the cart or if they're out of the cart, you know, you're trying to shop but you're also trying to watch your kids. So it's a lot going on when you go grocery shopping. So for us, this was a huge lifesaver but it also helped us with budgeting. Let's say your total comes to like, $312, right? Um, you know, Will and I will sit there and be like, okay, do we really need this extra thing of this or that? And we knock off that extra $12 so that we're back at our $300 budget. Um, so it really, really helps. Not only is it convenient, but it also is really great for budgeting. Well, once you go ahead and sit down and schedule a day with somebody, um, my biggest thing is have no distraction. If you have kids, either make sure that they're watching a movie or on the iPads or eating or something to where, um, you know, in our situation, I like it whenever they're sleeping. I just feel like, you know, I know I don't have to like focus on them, they're asleep and Will and I can actually brainstorm together on a clean slate with no interruptions. What I like to do is I like to have just a blank piece of paper, pen, and um, obviously with technology, you can use a computer or your phone, but for me, um, I feel like it's easiest if you have a pen and paper and you can write it out. I feel like if you do it that way, you and your partner or your spouse or your roommate um, can also be on the same page as to what exactly it is you're writing down. So once you pick out that day and that day happens and you're like, okay, let's sit down, let's jump into this, you know, 
Um, definitely make sure that you give yourself time as well. You know, don't rush into this like, oh, I only have 30 minutes because it's not going to take 30 minutes, um, at least for me, because Will and I will go back and forth on how can we do this better? How can we do that better? Can we switch plans and see if somebody else charges less? Stuff like that. Um, so that's a big thing too. Make sure that you give yourself time. You got to know what your bills are. That's everything in between. That's not just gas, electricity, water, trash. It's everything in between. That's groceries, your phone bill, um, all those little things, even including like, you know, your fun money. And I feel like fun money is a really big deal, which we'll get into that. You have to know all those things. So I feel like when you sit down and you're like, okay, what do we spend money on monthly? Oh, does your boyfriend buy a pack of cigarettes a month? Mine doesn't, obviously he vapes, but how much is juice, you know? Or um, I personally like to get eyelashes, that's an extra want. So many different little things that fall in between that um, you know, you may, you may not think of everything right then and there when you're sitting down. That's happened to me before. Where like a week later, you know, I'm driving and I'm like, oh my gosh, I paid $10 a month um, for my iCloud account so that I have more storage. And I'm like, that's something else I need to add to it. So it's definitely gonna be a process, but I feel like that first step of sitting down and writing down every, every, every little thing is your biggest step. After that, like what I like to do is I like to go through everything and figure out, okay, you know, our Cox bill is really high. My neighbor over here, you know, pays $30 less with this company. Should we make that jump? Should I call around and see like, you know, how, how much is it to make that, that jump? Because sometimes, you know, companies will charge you for like, you know, coming out in the service that they do. So, you know, it's all those little things that you want to try to contact and be like, how can I make my bills lower? That was even something ha that happened to Will and I like a few years ago where um, we were eating in and out like three to four times a week. So it sounds like a lot, but like, Sometimes we'd eat it for lunch, the next day we'd eat it for dinner, and just, you know, it's a quick, easy habit to kind of fall into. And all of those things can add up because for us to go and eat in and out, it's like our total's like 23 and change, right? So like, let's say it's 23.50 and we're eating out three to four times a week, and then times that week by four, that's X amount a month, you know? So those little things that you could change your ways in make a huge difference. So I do wanna add this little tip in here that, you know, when you do go by and like kind of minimalize each one, um, think about little things as far as like your electricity. Are you somebody who like when you leave a room, do you turn off the light or is it still on? Is that a habit that, you know, maybe your husband or your girlfriend can fix? Um, I know for us, we're constantly turning on and off the lights. Like, and I train it in my kid's head that when we leave a room, we turn off the light. When we come downstairs after um, the night, you know, we turn off the outdoor lights. You know, things like that that fall into a routine um, can help as well. I feel like that's a really important thing to think about because if you can get those little things lowered or if you could take them off of your monthly expenses, that will be more money for your fun money or that will be more money for your savings account. And that's the whole point to budgeting is having that extra fun money, having that extra saving money. So that's something that you definitely want to sit there and kind of figure out with your partner or your roommate or your spouse, whatever, and kind of talk about. The method that I like to go by is this, and it's very, very simple. It's your monthly income minus your monthly bills equals your fun money and your savings. Um, so for me, fun money is that little extra money that you get a month um, whether you decide it's going to be $200 a week or $300 a week, finding a good balance for, you know, making sure that you're putting money into your savings, but also being able to live. At the end of the day, my belief is in the little things in life. And I just feel like if you give yourself um, a little or a lot of fun money weekly, it goes a long way. You know, it, those are those little moments that you spend with your family when you go to the movies or you go get ice cream or you take your kids to go do pottery or you need socks or you want to go to the bookstore and buy a book. Um, I just feel like those little things are important in life. And I'm not against somebody who, you know, just has the method of, oh no, everything is going into my savings. I um, don't have fun money. I'll pull for my savings money, but um, I just feel like that kind of throws you off track in a way because then how are you budgeting your savings? You know what I mean? Your savings is something that you're supposed to build on, right? Your goal for savings should be just to stack. You know, that's your emergency. That's your, um, you know, oh, I got a flat tire. I have to pull from there. That's also my safety net. That's my cushion. Those um, are really, really important. But I feel like having that fun money is just as important as well. Being organized is huge. Um, you know, if you're organized or if you are on the path to want to become more organized, your life will be so much easier in so many different ways. It's all about sitting down and figuring out 
what you need to do to become more organized. Um, I mean, I, you guys know me by now, my house is organized to the T. You can open up any drawer or cabinet in my house and it is organized. And I'm talking, I have been through organizing my whole house once, twice, um, just to make sure it makes you know my life that much easier and I see other parents or people out there that struggle to do simple tasks when I can do them easily with two kids so I feel like that says a lot because I am organized I'm somebody where majority of my bills are paid on the first I sit here and I pay all my bills there are some bills that um, you know don't require to be paid until the 15th or the 18th um, but I just set it up so I pay it all at the first and I have never fallen off because majority of them give you like window times anyway So for me, that's what works I re really recommend it because majority of your bills are going to be asked to pay it on the first So like, you know your mortgage or your rent or your car payment things like that So if you have that in your head a schedule of okay, when do I sit down and budget? Um, this binder is something that I keep everything inside of um, it makes everything easy for me to see and visualize and explain if for some reason I'm having to go back and talk to a company I can go back through my paperwork and say okay, you know three months ago I was paying X amount why all of a sudden, you know, three months later, am I paying X? Or if somebody asks you, hey, you know, like I have neighbors that just moved in. What if they're like, hey, you know, how much is your electricity bill during the summer? Mine is this. Is that normal? You know what I mean? You can go back in your files and look at them. For me, I always look forward to having a house binder because it's convenient. Everything's right there. It's something that if you needed to take with you and go somewhere and pay the bills there, you could. When I pay my bills, I like everything to be very simple and to the point. So what I went ahead and did is I sat here on my computer um, yesterday and I made this up for you guys so if you guys want one um, you guys can just read down below how you can get it um, and what I'm gonna have you do is like once you purchase it you can go ahead and just print it right out from home and you'll have it forever I set it up the exact way that I do it because this is what has worked for me for so long it's a great way to have everything right in front of you so I always like to make sure that the company info is right there in front of your face every time you go to pay your bill because there's been incidents where I'm like, why is my bill like $100 more? You know what I mean? So I have, okay, what's their number? What's their website? All that stuff right there, especially with your account number because that's something that they're going to ask you right away. What's your account number? And sometimes you don't have that information on you. It's in, oh, I got to go look in my file. I got to go look in my mail. So the way I have it set up is I have their company name. So you're going to go ahead and write, you know, Southwest Gas. You're gonna write the telephone number to contact them, their website to reach them at, and your account number. And your account number is huge because majority of people that you call are gonna ask for that information. Now, some people might go to the extent of being like, I need the last you know, X of your social security number or um, that routing and account number are huge as well. So that's when the whole left-hand side over here with all that information can come really handy. So once you have all that information down, um, that's typically something that you don't need to repeat every time you go to pay your bills. Um, what I like to do is I like to fold the paper just enough so that you could see um, the date and the amount for the future payments to come. Um, obviously, I'm not going to continue writing all the company information over and over and over again. So if you go ahead and just get a little paper clip and you fold that piece of paper over and you just leave it like that. When you split your paper like that, it makes it easy to still be able to see all of the company information on the left hand side along with on the right hand side continuing on with your bill process throughout the next few months. So once you print this out, this might be something that you want to print maybe 12 out, obviously, for a year. Um, I know for me, when I hit that year line, I like to make sure I take all of my paperwork out and I document it and write, you know, 2018 to 2019. And I put it in a file and I kind of start fresh for the next coming year. Then I feel like once you put all those paperwork into a file um, and you start fresh, it's just something exciting to look forward to for the new year. You have a fresh slate of all of your bills. Um, along with you still can be able to access that if you needed to in your files. Now the rest of the binder isn't really that exciting. I bought these files just from Walmart for like I think 50 cents. Um, I really like them because the insides of them have pockets. Now you can put anything you want in these files. Um, I chose mail to go through, parents guide magazine. There's like this magazine that I like to collect that has kind of like fun things to do in Vegas um, depending on the type, the time of year. I have other receipts inside of my other receipts. I have like how much it is for my computer ink, um, how much it is for my eyelashes and things like that. 
And then the last thing that I have are papers to file. I think adding files to your binder is something that's just a little bit extra that you can, you know, put anything inside of or use them for so many different things. I know for me in the very back of my binder, I chose to put a lot of random things back here. I've been at my insurance company before and I've had my kids with me and they get really distracted. So like, I'm like, okay, here's stickers, here's a pen, here's paper, things to doodle on, here's a little book. Um, these things I feel like when you're a parent come in handy and I feel like if you have it all in one binder together, um, it will make your life a lot easier, especially with having even just something simple like blank pieces of paper to kind of doodle on, you know, if you're somewhere and you need to kind of math a few things out really quick on pen and paper. So I use the back for those reasons. That's really it for my budgeting. Um, I hope that you guys can gain a lot from this. Like I said, this is something that really doesn't come easy. It's something that you really need to sit down and kind of focus on and kind of figure out. So it's not something that really happens overnight necessarily. Anyway, so that concludes this video. I hope you guys like it. I know it's kind of all over the place. This is my first time trying to like be teacher and kind of like explain to you guys how I do things. So for next week's video, I'm not gonna give you guys a topic choice today because I'm gonna go ahead and do a vlogging style video, but stay tuned to that video to watch what topic choices I give you guys next.